Alright everyone, welcome to my third Wolves Diary. We went 0-3 in this past uh, past three games, and man, has it been hard to watch. Last night's game was January 9th, 2015, Timberwolves vs. Cavaliers, that's what I'm going to be playing. I didn't even finish watching the game, honestly, because it was terrible. I, um... I went to dinner and movie Hello, last night, so I just recorded it on the DVR. I actually recorded the uh, the game before that Shaquille too against the um who they play again? I don't even remember. The Nuggets, I think. Yeah, the Nuggets. I didn't watch that game live either. I went out to dinner again that night because honestly. The Timberwolves have been ever since that Sixers game, the first game I'm going to be, talk going to be talking about. It's just been very hard to watch. Well, you know what? I don't even have to worry about Kevin Martin anymore because he is now playing. We got our boy Pekovic back, which I'm going to be talking about. It's just been a bummer recently. Um, that's yeah, fine. Whatever. So, uh, all because I'm just going to be complaining the whole time, and I'm going to be doing commentary while I'm playing, so not exactly focused either, but here we go, let's just start it out. Oh shit, I hope I don't get copyright flagged for that damn song. Happened before already. Okay, so, the Sixers game. I didn't put the date down for whatever reason, I think it was... A Wednesday night, maybe? So the sixth? Might have been... Yeah. No, it would have been the, the fourth. And, and they are who we thought they'd be coming into the season. No so, before the game, Sixers signed Elton Brand, and I was thinking maybe that was a... Uh, oh, shit. Not first way to start. I was thinking that might have been a... Uh, legacy that Flip might leave behind with the... Uh, Given the NBA a strategy of teaming in, teaming up ultra young guys with ultra old guys to sort of give them, them a veteran voice in the locker room. I don't know how well it's working or how well it's going to work because the young guys gonna have to, are going to have to respect the old guys who's uh, still on the court or have respect for history, which I know a lot of young people don't. But I thought that was kind of cool that they signed him the day that we play them. Sort of, I took it as sort of a nod to flip, but who knows? Wiggins, great way to start the game. And now James pushing it up, no one back to stop him. Fast break opportunity. Okay, beginning of the game. First quarter, eight minutes thirty seconds. Stalkis just blows by Wiggins and throws it down with like authority. And it's not often that one of that was kind of alarming. Is also one of your best that Wiggins couldn't stop uh, a Stalkis drive. With J.R. Smith, everywhere he's gone, he's played both roles. Sometimes to the team's benefit, but others to its. So after that, so it's just, I don't even review my notes. I'm just. This is like going to be one of the worst Wolf Diary of all time because it's, it's just been one of the worst Wolf stretches this year for sure and in recent memory as well. I mean every year it just gets worse as a Wolves fan. Like you think the injuries are an all time low but then everyone's healthy and you get killed by the Sixers. Give me a break. Oh yeah, so um... This was a alarming thing. First quarter of the Sixers game, six minutes fifty-two seconds or thereabouts. Prince throws in an out of timeout play to Gorgie. Er, so he throws it in to Gorgie. Gorgie's not paying attention. It bounces right off him, and that uh, goes out of bounds. And Prince is just standing there with his head up in the air, like I cannot believe that this is the person who I'm actually playing with. I used to be on. One of the greatest Garnett like team teams of all time, Garnett Detroit, Good for the basket. in the mid 2000s with, with Chauncey, yeah, Rip, Prince, uh, it over to Doris Burke, who out the Ben Wallace, and uh, Rashid. Yes, like, he told me that when you're playing against and then you have to play with a guy like Gorgie Jang, who has no idea. He does. seems like such a dumb person. Like I like him a lot, but he just seems stupid. In terms of basketball IQ, I was like, come on. Great, thanks for the report, Doris. And here's Rubio. 
Following the three pointer by Kevin Love. Okay. At the beginning Smithing of the game, I thought the Sixers and Now team was pretty solid. They were um, focusing more on the Timberwolves Back squad. Oh yeah, this game wasn't on FSN, so I had to use my League Pass subscription for once. One of those once in a while. Um, for the first half, but then I saw on Twitter people were ripping on them that they were pretty bad, and I agree that later in the game they started uh, getting a little excitable as the Sixers were winning, and then they became sort of homers. Boy, with an open look like that, he is so gifted. Man, you've got to play better defense. Eventually, he's going to make you pay. Yeah, you can see he's still in rhythm. They kept on getting Gorgie, Gorgie Jang's name wrong. They pronounced it two different ways. Kind of annoying. But then again, they're the Sixers announced team, so I'm sure they're just like, why even bother getting used to saying people's names? They're just going to be gone again while they're learning the opposing team's bench players. But, great. That's his first foul. Oh yeah, Molly French wasn't bad either. I kind of liked her. She was all right. Um, first quarter, two minutes, fourteen seconds. Bob shot the technical foul instead of Zach Levine, which is just mind blowing. Gorgi or uh, Shabazz Muhammad's free throw shot looks like it's it's just pushing it towards the hoop. He kind of looks like a big man. I mean, he has the same motion every time, but it just doesn't look solid. I don't have his numbers in front of me in terms of uh, free throw percentage, but I can't imagine it's that great. From eight, that one wide left, and being that close to the hoop. I uh, throughout the game, we were just getting um. Out rebounded big time by the Sixers. Sixers got so many offensive rebounds, it was embarrassing. And we kept on uh, turning it over to against the Sixers. I mean, you know, you expect bad teams to win the games occasionally, surprisingly. But you never expect it to be against your team. To the inside. Turns out maybe we should have expected it. And that one's good. Because I mean, we're not very good either. We beat the Bolt we beat the Hawks twice this year. And we beat the Bulls. And those teams are both not doing as hot as they were last year. Our quality of play is just took a nose dive. Hard force though. TJ McConnell was a pretty decent point guard for the Sixers. I mean, in terms of just being like an annoying JJ Barea type where he's pressuring full court and tipping passes, sticking his nose in plays. He's get, he had a bunch of assists that game. You'll see in the box score that I post in the uh, video description. Rashawn Holmes, I never heard of this guy. He killed us all night. He was sort of like that Boban Marjanovic game with the Spurs. He was having a really good game. Um, second quarter, 8 minutes, 20 seconds. Payne totally, utterly misjudges a rebound and allows an and one. The person just like, he he ran in for a rebound that was clearly coming way off of the rim. And, oh man, I can't believe that shit. And um, then he follows the person as they fly by him for a dunk. He's just a headache. Every once in a while he'll do some nice things and the rest of the time you're just like, this kid can't be in the NBA. And he's so old too, are he? Wow, what a pass there. He made that a very easy basket with that set. Elevatova dishes to Mozgov. This uh, the Sixers game, we finally got to see some Miller in there, which was nice. But I mean, it, it's at, at the expense of at the expense of what's his face, uh, Tyus, but he looked pretty decent with the second unit in there. to the cash for going out and, and getting Mozgov. I mean, they paid a hefty price giving up the two first. Yeah, there was in the second quarter, seven minutes, 20 seconds, Miller, Levine, Boz, Belly, and Jang, which I thought was an interesting lineup. Oh, man. So here was my big, uh, big thought. Too many of those to count. These teams have matched each other before the half. Play for play, it has been impressive. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. And the jam is that 
Maybe our issue is that we don't have enough high IQ basketball players because Levine, Boz, Wiggins, Jang, Payne all seem to make a lot of stupid mistakes. And I know they're all really young and that hopefully they'll grow out of it with experience, but right now I think that's a big issue for us. That we rely too much on Prince and KG because they have high basketball IQ, but they have literally nothing left in their tank to give us, which is very frustrating. Oh, shoot. Uh, so my halftime note, encouraging that Smitch is finally giving Belly some time, but why no Cat in the second and all Jang? Like, I don't get why Cat's minutes are so uh, varied from game to game. He should be playing almost as many minutes as Wiggins was in his rookie season. Third quarter, 10 minutes, 11 seconds. Cat picks up his third foul real quick. Um, Okafor is just owning pounds really hard. He, uh, and then the third quarter, 8 minutes, 8 seconds, he picked up his fourth foul. Okafor just, like, was crushing Cat. Another note I found, a little alarming, was that Cat is always throwing his body around, he's always going to the ground, he's always running real hard, back on defense and then falling down, going real hard in transition for layups and stuff. But you gotta be a lot more I really like that he has that type of energy, but I just worry about his long-term health because I don't want him to put it all on the court on his losing season, and then when, we, when we're finally good, hopefully he'll be like a shell of himself, sort of like the Wayne Wade was. That's why Kevin people always talk about it in terms of being a marathon and not a sprint. Here we go. There's nothing that can I'm already in the second the quarter and I have I'm not even through the first game. So far it's been a closely contested game as we get to the so blow through the rest of these notes here. Um the end of the third quarter, my note was Zach always has to take the last shot no matter what. Twice in this game, Belly was standing open on the three-point line, but Zach refused to pass it to him. They took ugly shots, missed both of them, and Belly is just standing there like, Hello, come on, man. I'm ready. Ready for the ball. Man. So on the floor for Cleveland, Kyrie Irving and J.R. Smith at the guard set. Kevin Love out there with Iman Shump. And it's so fourth quarter, 8-15, this game is starting to get away from the Wolves. Really disheartening, we can't even pull away from the Sixers. So that was sort of the beginning of the end for us in this game. Oh, come on. Well, that's that's real life right there. Wiggins can't hold it when he's going into your post. Pass to Irving. Back to Love. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. And it's Smith missing. It's a clear look at the hoop. He doesn't miss many of those. Here's Wiggins. That's in. Coming off an assist. Fourth quarter. Five minutes to 3.45 about. My note says. What a shit stretch. We go down by 11 with a minute and a half left. Or with within a minute and a half, sorry. And we're a little over a minute and a half into the second quarter of action. If they don't show some fight uh, to come back, this will be a shit night. And they didn't. They didn't. Good job there of getting himself in close enough that he could just tip it back in. And you know those kind of plays in the offensive glass can tell the story. Four minutes or four fourth quarter, two minutes left. I said I'm done with this game. Wiggins turnover. We can't rebound. It's I'm totally apathetic at this point for the Wolves. It's it's. It's, I, mean, it's just, it, I just expect at this point. I'm not even surprised. I'm not disheartened. It's just... I can't believe I still watch a lot, all of these games the way I do. Um, I really hope Ben Simmons can find his way to Mini. Maybe that'll be uh, the missing ingredient. Maybe someone who can create his own shot, but also still run an offense. Maybe that'll be... Uh, the cure to this situation. I really hope that Sam Mitchell is uh, using his last days here. I hope these are his last days here as a way to just yell at all these young kids and make them feel like they are uh, underachieving and that they could be doing so much better. And the Cavaliers lead by so the day after this game, um, there's no practice. There was just a film session, and then they stood around for an hour and a half, I guess. And uh, 
to talk about their issues. Here's Fuck. Cats called it therapeutic the night before Ricky had said they hit heart or rock bottom, so sounds like an utter mess. Maybe some good will come of it. Turns out not really. Nothing really good came of it. But something that's worthwhile. Here's Wiggins. Is that um Peck was upgraded to 50-50 for the next game against the Nuggets. And what do you know? He actually played against the Nuggets. Let me get my notes on that here. Moving against Rubio. So yeah, the 6th of January, our record was 12 and 21 going into the game. Uh, Peck and Kmart will play tonight, which means uh, that there will probably be less boss minutes, no ties, no more pain. Hopefully Belly gets some. That turns out to be true. There was no pain minutes, I don't think, and Tyus was inactive. But Bozzy was getting some minutes. Uh, there was no Moody Ace for the Nuggets in this game. LeBron comes in for Kevin Love. Jefferson's checked in for Shumper. Back him down, Peck. Now here's Pekovic. Oh, what the fuck is that? No way. Here's Wiggins has just been frustrating this stretch of games. I mean, he really turned it on in the Cavaliers game, but it was in a losing, like, terrible blowout effort, so who really cares? But, first quarter, first thing he does, post up Harris. And then he settles for a step back jumper. I know Harris is supposed to be a good defender and all that, but. Last break, Minnesota. Here's Levine. Fires the three. Oh, come on. And he banks in the lane. Just not enough bodies. Ricky had two threes within the first uh, four minutes, which was nice. He was, his shot looks good. His shot always looks good at the beginning of games, but. But, um, it always falls apart, like, in the second quarter. Uh, halfway through the first quarter, there was a terrible offensive possession that I took note of. Four perimeter passes, no, uh, entry passes at all. Just four around the perimeter. Then you enter into Cat, and he had zero, like, almost zero time on the shot clock left, and he had to chuck it out. It's just, I don't get what our offense is at all, really. And Muhammad has it in the corner. There we go. Yeah, first quarter, 2 minutes, 25 seconds. Peck is in, and he scored right away, which is awesome to see. Fucking awesome. Um, Boz and Martin check in with Rubio, Peck, and uh, Corgi. Actually, Levine checked in right after that, which was interesting. I was really hoping to see uh, some Bozzi with Rube. Cleveland in their last game play. And that's one of those games where I just felt the attitude going in was wrong. I think they believe what was I should have just held it. I don't know what I'm doing. In the press. And that was a game that they just couldn't win. Um, I noticed body language. Five minutes, 50, 50, 55 seconds in the second quarter. All the Wolves just looked pissed. And that they're just... They didn't seem to be like they're having any fun, which is, I don't blame them, but it's so disheartening to see that. One minute, 40 seconds, second quarter, Nuggets are hella floppers, Gallo, Jokic, Fareed, they're all flopping all over the court, getting calls that shouldn't be getting calls. Annoying. 50 seconds, second quarter, Wiggins needs to learn how to... Control the ball, unacceptable level of turnovers and loose balls. Like I said, he just can't control it when he gets into the post and he's backing people down. He's always getting it poked away. Really annoying. Halftime note, Peck is doing really well. Eight points in limited minutes. The Nuggets have uh, six threes, and that's keeping them in the game. 18 points on six shots. That's uh, nine two-point shots. That's just math. I'm just saying, you know. You can get 18 points on six made shots. You might as well do it. Okay, it's halftime. Thank God. I was getting worried. I don't know why. That was third. It's the 2K Sports Halftime <coughs> Show. Um, nine minutes, 28 seconds in the third quarter. Wiggins loses the ball again. In transition this time. Just terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, welcome back to the uh, halftime show. Ernie Johnson, Shaq. 
kidding. Six minutes in 31 seconds in the third quarter. KG got another technical. He has to be getting close to a suspension for technicals because he's getting one like every other game now. Uh, here's a little joke for you. Tayshawn Prince of the Long Two. Tayshawn Prince of the Long Two. I used his last name as part of a joke. But it hasn't not very funny, but, you know. play from a team on yeah, at least he was making them that game. He was making DK almost all the shots he took, but, I mean, the long two is just so annoying. In front of a very high Three minutes, 26 seconds, third quarter. We shoot another 10-point lead away. I mean, that's just part of the course. Now you get up 10 points, and then you just give it right back. So important for Two minutes, 21 seconds to the third quarter. Levine, Boz, Kmart in. It just blows my mind that... Sam doesn't stagger that lineup with the with the starting unit. I mean, all three of those guys can get you buckets. Rubio, Prince, KG cannot get you any buckets. How about you put Rubio, Levine, Boz, like uh, Belly, and Peck in, and then have come come back with Rubio, Kmart, Wiggins, KG, and and Cat or something, you know? He doesn't stagger the lineups. It's just hockey rotations, pretty much. You just put in a new line, and that's that's who you're gonna play with. I don't understand why we we refuse to stagger our lineups at all. In the Cavaliers game, we did a little bit, but it's just because we have so many damn big men now that we have to stagger. James kicks to Love. Just five to shoot. Prince with the defensive effort. You know, the Cavs Let's play some uh, focus minutes here. Oh, there it goes again. Man. Smith dishes to LeBron. From 11 feet away, it's good the assist that time from Smith. Eight minutes, 46 seconds in the fourth quarter. Really uninspiring basketball. I'm debating whether or not I should start highlighting uh, some prospects for the draft because I'm sure we're going to be within four to seven range in the draft so you can get one player that might help us there from 13 no good so Cleveland will take it the other way and Love who would also go on to make his first postseason played in the first round last year six minutes 51 seconds fourth quarter Wiggins playing like shit we need to figure out something else for him, like a new role. Maybe just, I mean, maybe Rubio is not the person who I want him to be. I really think he can be a, a solid point guard for this team, but it's just not working out with him. Uh, maybe a new wing partner, maybe uh, Kayshawn Prince and Kmart aren't the answer. Maybe we should just try Levine with him. We need to try something different, because it's obviously not been working for us. 12 and 21. I mean, I don't know what Sam Mitchell's First doing. I, 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 you know, there's tons of things I don't see. I'm not a basketball genius by any stretch of the imagination. The Captain Obvious. The most I don't know. Oh, it it just appears that we need to try something. He to on the Five minutes, fourth quarter. Ricky passes up a wide open sure. three. Well, Prince passed up multiple wide open threes where there's no one within five feet of him and he just... He just stands there directing the you offense. Know, you got to take that shot if you have it. As a ball handler, because you can't play him to one side. I, like, even if you miss it, you have to make him respect you. You can't just stand there that far away and not take the shot. And here's Towns. Oh, my goodness. And stolen by Love. Smith, the pass to Irving. James with it. Now defended by Wiggins. Down low. There you go. Stolen by Garnett. Wiggins kicks to Rubio. Ball is not loose. From 17 feet out. Shot is good. The Cavaliers lead. Two minutes, 15 seconds in the fourth quarter. We gave up another offensive rebound. That's been a weird, weird issue lately. Is that we've just been giving up offensive rebounds to whoever. Whoever we play, you know, Cat, Peck, 
Forgy, they're all pretty good rebounders. I don't know why they can't get defensive rebounds against these teams. 50 seconds into the fourth quarter. Why is Garnett and Prince on, in on offense down two? You know, I don't get it. That's Sam Mitchell right there. I don't get why that would be. Uh, end note, we always force Wiggins to score at the end of games. Has to have one of the worst field goal percentages of all time. At the end of games, it's just it's just pathetic. Yeah, now that I'm reading these notes, I remember that from, like, five minutes in the fourth quarter till the end of the game, neither team scored a basket until uh, the Nuggets did, like, with a minute left. It was just terrible. Next day notes, super down on the team right now, listen to uh, the Zach Lowe podcast, the Lowe Post, and he was saying that um, the Suns are willing to almost give away Markeith Morris, and I was thinking, why not just try Kmart for Markeith, maybe throw in, um, I don't know, maybe throw in Payne with that? It seems like it might be an entertaining trade for the Suns. They get rid of their headache. They get a guy who's got a player option. I mean, they have terrible contracts on their team anyways. So it's not like one year of uh, $7 million for Kmart's going to be that terrible for them when they have... Uh, when they have... What's his face? Tyson Chandler rotting away on there. On their roster. Now here's Towns. He's covered by Irving. Towns dishes to Jang. It's good. This game is all even. And when the size advantage <laughs> is as both of our uh, both the Suns and the uh Oh man, sorry. Both the Suns and the Wolves season is already done. Don't even don't even try. There's no there's no try. There's no way you're gonna get in the playoffs with the records you guys have right now. And I know the West is down, but the I seriously do not think the Rockets could be that bad for the rest of the year. And at the top of the key, Towns. And there are the Timberwolves with another So, my Wolves versus Cavs game notes, like I mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned it. Pretty sure I mentioned it. Went out to eat last night, which was a Friday. Went to Texas Roadhouse, had a steak, and some uh, cheese fries, which was excellent. I went with my girlfriend's family, who whose mother had her birthday yesterday, it was a nice meal. I enjoyed it. Then I went to go see Hateful Eight the next day, or the right after the meal. Good movie. Really enjoyed it. Honestly, I should have just looked at the score and just not even watch the game but I decided to watch it on Saturday and it wasn't very great. I, I'm recording this right after I watched the game. I didn't finish the fourth quarter. I will for whatever reason. I don't know why. And uh, not exactly looking forward to it but I will finish it. But I just figured you know what I'll watch it in spurts after this. We're going to watch a movie, me and my girlfriend are going to watch a movie after I get done doing this. I think I'm just going to watch another uh, Quentin Tarantino movie. Quentin Tarantino, that Hateful Eight movie really got me in the mood to watch Inglorious or Django or even Reservoir Dogs again. Michael Madsen was in it. And I haven't watched Kill Bill in a long time either. And my girlfriend hates Kill Bill, so I was able to watch that with her, but uh, I want to watch it. So yeah, here's my notes. Uh, I knew the outcome going in. I knew that we uh, were getting blown out for most of the game because the guy I follow on Twitter, Steve McPherson, who wrote, writes for Wolf Among Wolves, did the title of his article after last night's game was, I'm watching the Wolves blow out, ask me anything, for like the Twitter AMA thing. Oh, come on, get that. The Cavaliers trail by four. Good, and the assist goes to LeBron. But I also knew that Wiggins had 35 points, which was his new career high. I going into the game, I wasn't going to watch the commentary. I was uh, just listening to podcasts, so I had it on mute, mute with my headphones on. Excellent ball movement there, guys. And that's if in case you're wondering, the podcast I listened to was the Hateful Eight podcast with 
on the watch, Bill Simmons Podcast Network. Uh, it was just like an hour and a half of Andy Greenwald and Sean Fennessy interviewing a couple people about Hateful Eight and what they thought of it. I mean, solid podcast. Wiggins, right side. Here's Martin. Hey, okay, first quarter. Yeah, same first play every first quarter, every beginning of the game, same first play. Wiggins comes off, uh, Wiggins runs off the cap screen, curls around it, and tries to get to the basket, or he just sells for a jump shot. Every game, same play. It's not, I mean, I guess it is effective, and it gets Wiggins the shots early, which is why they, what they wanted. But, um... I don't know. I think I would know exactly what they're going to do. And it's a two-point shot, so it's not like the other team's really scared of it or anything. But if I was the other team, I'd just load up everyone on the right side of the court, which is what they always... Or the left side of the court, which is where they always run it off of. And just, you know, make Tayshawn Prince shoot along, too, I guess. Because the only person you should be scared of on the Wolves is Wiggins and Cat. So why not just try and fuck up Wiggins? Get rid of them right away. Next note, Prince gets the steal, then gets blocked in transition by LBJ doing his famous uh, rundown block. But Wiggins was there and got an easy dunk. You'd like to see Wiggins run in transition because you almost never do. And look at that, he got rewarded for it. It was uh, relatively competitive for the first couple minutes, but then just went off the rails, and my attention span was uh, divided, to say the least, I guess. You'll see, as I read my notes, that towards the end of the game, it was almost zero focus. And there's the pass to Pekovic, to the middle, here's Miller. Oh. Cavaliers with the rebound. Love's got his fourth rebound in this one. The Cavaliers trail by seven. Oops. We played just over one minute here in the fourth quarter. Della I saw a note that said Della Vadova is the third or the seventh ranked, um, seventh ranked three point shooter in the NBA. Which is just amazing. D here. Critical stretch. First quarter, eight minutes. Uh, Wiggins has nine points on 4 4 shooting, which is impressive. By the half, he had. He almost had his uh, season average. I think he had 19 or 18 points on 7 of 9 shooting. Pretty damn good. First quarter, seven minutes. Big Peck and Cat getting some minutes together uh, before Cat and Borgie, which was interesting. Um. And then Ricky fed it to Peck with a no-look pass, which just gave me some good memories of the old pick and roll between Ricky and Peck, where Ricky would just do a nice little pocket pass to Peck going into the lane. I want to see you playing to win, not playing not to lose. I don't care. Oh man, what happened there? Tayshawn Prince has checked in for Miller. Here's Jefferson. Um, first quarter, five minutes, thirty seven seconds. Peck can't stay with LeBron James. Two horrendous follow fouls really quick in succession. You know, I don't expect Peck to stay with LBJ, but really not a lot of people can. And he just came off an injury, but it was like, it would just look like a giant uh, hugging like a miniature giant. Yeah, but they've also done a great job. First quarter, minute 55 seconds. Bob is the first wing in for Prince, not Levine. But then uh, almost immediately, Levine checked in for Rubes. First quarter, 35-27 was the uh, end of the first quarter with the Cavs being up. It felt close, like I mentioned, and then it was just a blowout afterwards. Oh, come on, Peck. played only 31 games before he was sidelined. Clark with an Achilles injury. Yeah, and you know, he wasn't even playing quite up to par before the injury, Kevin. After shooting well over 50% in each of his first four seasons, he dropped down to 43% last year. Look at those Levine stats up there. He's just horrendous on defense. Love wide open. He fired. Wide open. Garnett with the block. He's all alone. All alone. Oh, oh. There you go. 
sublime stuff, guys. Second quarter, 8 minutes, 13 seconds. Not going to lie, super, super forgettable stretch for the Wolves. I don't really remember what happened. Second quarter, 7-13. Nothing more cringeworthy than one foot inside the three-point line shot. Which is uh, Zach Levine, Oz, and Tayshawn Prince special. I can't believe that that shot's still in the NBA. That any coaching staff doesn't just drill the hell out of their, their squad not to do that. Because what's the point? You make it two points, you miss it. It's nothing. But why not just stretch it out a little bit more for that three point shot? At least you can justify missing it. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. Let's see if I can... Look at that. Shabazz Muhammad, 77. Zach Levine, 85. That's what I'm talking about. Why Why did Zach Tayshon shoot that... Or what the hell? Why did Boz shoot that technical foul in the Philly game? Oh, I missed it. It was just... It just really bothered my mind. The dunk contest last season was his coming out party to the world. He put on a show that everybody in the NBA was buzzing about. Here's what Minnesota's going with right now. Shang comes in for Nikola Pekovic. Oh, yeah. Here's a random thought I had watching the second quarter of the Cavs. Wolves. And should I just start watching the other team more than I am on the Wolves? Because when... I'm never really watching the other team, really. I'm always watching... The Timberwolves players on defense and offense. Stolen by Levine. And here we go. Wiggins heading to the hoop. And I'm just starting to wonder if I should just watch the other team so I can appreciate good basketball because last year when the playoffs hit, it was it was mind blowing watching good players play basketball. Play good basketball, play team basketball, you know. Maybe I should just start trying to transition out of Wolves mode and start watching the other teams take advantage of the Wolves so I can appreciate some good basketball. Kind of depressing, right? It's just been a really depressing story. Um, second quarter, they showed a stat on ESPN. Fast break point, 16-0. In favor of the Cavs. It's just like, how the hell do Wiggins, Levine, Boz not use their athleticism in transition, run out, defend, and get easy baskets in transition? Like, that should be the strength of our team. Instead, we run shitty half court offense with Tayshon and Garnett. Rubio's got three rebounds so far in the game. And now the fast break, Irving with the ball. Garnett with the block. Get it. Thompson passes to LeBron. The next game we've seen from LeBron. Um, so, uh, fourth quarter, J.R. Smith is... So, I think he had 27 points. As far as I watched it into the fourth quarter, I don't know what he ended up with, but... J.R. Smith is so odd, like... Some games he's just... He could be the best player on a team some games. And other times he's barely an NBA player. I don't understand J.R. Smith. He's an enigma. Like I was... They showed uh, graphics of the Cavaliers' older teams that LeBron played with. Like Eric Snow, Larry Hughes, Zaldrunas Algauskas. Like those types of teams. You also get to set oh, fuck me. And it makes me wonder how we're going to remember J.R. Smith like. 99 times out of 100, you'll get the dunk or the foul. J.R. Smith is so weird. Is he going to be like an Eric Snow type or like that guy was garbage? Or is he going to be a Larry Hughes type where we're like, Larry Hughes had some good games. But he was never really a great player. Uh, just some random ass thoughts. A positive note I mentioned earlier uh, in the second quarter, 30 28. I noticed how Sam was handling the bigs. It was very interesting. He played KG and Cat, then Cat and Peck, then Jang and Peck, then Belly and Cat. I just liked how he was mixing and matching so much instead of just playing uh, set rotations like he usually does with his hockey rotations. He was actually shifting in some some cat and uh, 
And once again, I'm just shitting the game away right now. You know, even though he missed that three-point shot, I think the defense has to do a better job of challenging the shot. Yeah, as a coach, you can really ill afford to have All right. those types of opportunities. Well, I'll just save the rest of my notes for after this game so I can actually get a win, maybe. That'd be nice. And over the big guy. Way up and over the big guy. And what a time in the ball game to make it happen. Oh, here's Jang. They don't have Jang's jump shot down. He loads it up way slower than that. He's stepping right into the spotlight there. Well, there's a timeout, so I might as well just finish my notes because I didn't really watch the second half at all. So two minutes or second quarter, one minute fifty six seconds. The three problem is so apparent once again. Cavaliers just draining threes all night, and our team barely even shoots them. Second quarter, fifty five seconds left in the quarter. Uh, Belly rejects LBJ, which was awesome. It was just a little victory. He just went up and stuffed him when LeBron was driving. That was really nice to see. I hope Belly really starts picking it up. Yeah, so here's my second half notes, pretty much. Third quarter, 5 minutes, 49 seconds. Barely watching anymore. So bad. Laid the newspaper out with my headphones on. Just read the newspaper. And it turned into the fourth quarter. Then the fourth quarter, um, I noticed how bad we are at out-of-timeout plays and side-out defense. We're barely even functional when it comes to that stuff and that's when I stopped watching I didn't even I didn't even look at what the end of the score was when I stopped watching but just know that it was uh, it was pretty bad let's try and get a win for once in a wolf's diary how about that now Irving oh shit that ain't gonna help boy is it tough to stop LeBron right now um, 47 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's bad times to be a Wolves fan right now. Pretty bad times. I'm, I am so happy that Peck's back because Pekovic is an awesome person. And if he can at least play, uh, like, like, just play, like, maybe 15 minutes a game. For the remainder of his contract, I'd be alright with it because he could be a force off the bench when he's conditioned. And, you know, I, I think bench big men are severely underrated. Even though in the NBA nowadays, the focus is so much on the three point shot, I think that you should surround sort of like uh, Orlando Magic used to do, where they just surrounded Dwight Howard with three point threats. And, uh, Dwight Howard just be a rebounding defensive big man. Peck isn't going to be a defensive big man, but he can rebound, that's for sure, and he can, uh... Oh my god! You always want a player to have his head up. How embarrassing was that? I can't believe that. I just wanted to run by on the baseline, and he just dives out of bounds. Pekovic can... He can get baskets, you know? He's as good of an offensive threat as Dwight Howard ever was, if you ask my, if you ask my opinion. Which is kind of stupid, considering Dwight Howard had a, an athletic aspect to his game that Pekovic never had. But. Where Dwight Howard, where Dwight Howard's value always uh, came in was his uh, athleticism and his defense. Then you take that, but it's about being a good quick. Oh my god! That's terrible. Alright, here's what we're gonna do we're gonna get the buzzer beater achievement. I've never got in any 2K game. This is what we're gonna do we're gonna get the buzzer beater achievement. I'm gonna sub in Levine, Martin, Prince, or uh, Wiggins, Muhammad. Where is he? I can't even... Oh, fuck that. We'll do Belly, and then we'll do Cat. That's a good offensive lineup. They're no, not exactly defensive, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to get the buzzer beater chief, okay? That's what's going to happen right now. Billy 
Pitch by Elitza. Oh, fuck! Overtime, and I ran out of notes. Go figure. Shit. I've never gotten that buzzer beater achievement. Fuck. Overtime number one. Getting going right now. <sighs> So Cleveland will get the first possession. And so they have the first opportunity on offense. I can't believe it's even got to half time. Or to overtime. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineup for us now in overtime. So on the floor for Minnesota. Garnett out there with Towns. Then it's Andrew Wiggins. Then there's Shabazz Muhammad. And it's Levine. And at the point, clock is at three. Love, no luck. Minnesota shooting has been beyond great up until now. How about 57% from the field overall? Garnett wide open. That ball. That's the shot right there. Time from he can still Six hit that. Points for Garnett. The Cavaliers trailing. James outside. Master and another master of the long two, Kevin Garnett. Down low. Here's Thompson. Minnesota with the rebound. Garnett's got his third rebound on the night. Huh. Dishes it to Muhammad. Towns with it. It's up against Thompson. And Towns gets it to go. And it's a four-point Timberwolves lead. There's... There's been some scuttlebutt that the Timberwolves are accusing to trade Shabazz and Muhammad, and I don't know if they're just strong-arming teams into giving them ridiculous offers, or if they're serious if they don't want to trade them, because... I'm happy about that. I think Shabazz Muhammad should be our bench scorer for the long haul. I'd be totally fine with trading Gorgie Jane. He has to have some decent value in the NBA, right? He has to be at least... At least a decent commodity. Yeah, get in there. And I'd be alright with trading him. I think I think Bielitsa should be our our project for the rest of the season is to get him into the shape he can be he can potentially be. I think that guy can be a great starter along with Cat eventually. He's got ball handling skills. Oh, that's my bad. Oh, for three. Oh man. He can be a, a ball handler. He can be a rebounder. He has. He's, he's gonna get pushed around on defense, but he, he's at least uh, aware of how to block shots and all that jazz. Oh, fuck me. One oh two left to play in the first overtime. To the inside. I don't know how our defense can be so bad. Whatever. And so it's Minnesota with it. And Rubio kicks to Wiggins. The shot is off. Good D by Johnson. I cannot get foul calls in this game at all. And then we don't rebound it and shit. It's like, what the fuck? Well, I think I've lost the last three Wolves Diaries and I'm going to lose again. Rubio, the pass to Garnett. Another miss yeah. Minnesota. Oh well. Basket here in this game may be all over. Yeah, but but the main priority, Kevin, has to be taking care of the basketball and using the five. Shot and game clock separated by five. LeBron is doubled. Shot clock at six. Ha! Huh? Holy shit. He went over a bend. And those are the kinds of mistakes that are magnified when we're talking about a game down I don't know why we're not... I mean, I know I should be the one substituting him, but... Why isn't any other buddy... Like, why isn't the AI substituting for three-point shooters? Wiggins outside. He feeds it to Rubio. Looking to end the run. Off target from... Whatever. So, there you go. That's... My third Wolf's Diary, Apathy Edition. Thank you, Kevin. Just, just whatever edition of Wolf's Diary. Hopefully next week will be better. I doubt it, though. Because, like Ricky said, we've hit rock bottom. 
There's no place to go but up, but somehow we just managed to dig a little deeper every week. I think I will start trying to focus in on some NBA pro or draft prospects because, you know, the future is always brighter in Minnesota. The present's always shit, but the future is always brighter. So, with that sour note, catch you next time.